When you Google successful people, you see images like these. People who are on their phone or climbing on some sort of fake staircase, crossing the finish line or looking at their watches. In other words, they're constantly working, they're doing, staying busy in a society that never stops. Right now, we're living through an unprecedented time in our lives. We've been told to stay home, limit how much time we spend outside doing activities. Activities that used to keep us occupied, or in other words, not bored. I think we can use boredom to our advantage. Hear me out. So if you list out every single emotion that we have, we generally know how to react to each and every single one. When we're sad, we know we should cry. When we're anxious, we know we should take a deep breath. When we're happy, we know we should smile. But boredom is interesting because we don't really know how to react when we're bored. So I read a book. I read How to Be Bored by Eva Hoffman. I mean, there's no secret that we love. I mean, love hopping from one simple gratification to the next. And Eva Hoffman in this book mentions this. She even mentions what happens to our brains and our mental psyche when we're doing this. She says that our experiences are not only fragmented, but somehow temporary and thin. It leaves us anxious and dissatisfied. So what's the best way to fix this, to handle this? She says intervals of high activity, then directed effort with intervals of goalless, undutiful, leisure. So she's pretty much telling us to put ourselves intentionally in boring situations. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to intentionally put myself into three boring situations for 30 minutes. And immediately after, I'm going to give myself a creative challenge to complete. So the question I'm trying to answer is, can I use boredom as a mechanism, as a tool to do tasks that generally take me a lot longer to complete? Let's find out. I wanted to pick a task that was incredibly boring that it could become repetitive. And sorting beans was perfect for that because it's a boring task that can easily become repetitive. I also wanted to pick a task that would allow me to feel a sensation as Eva Hoffman would say as unpressured idleness. So I can feel the full benefits of this exercise. And since I was doing this for 30 minutes, my brain immediately went to a methodical practice. So what I first did was I would start picking out beans in a circular motion and do this until I would get to the center. And then I transitioned to picking every other bean and then eventually I would pick just a segment of the pot and pick out a certain bean until I couldn't see any more. And with the time constraint comes this level of competitiveness, especially for me. So I would wanna see how quickly I could pick out every single bean, which made the activity less boring. And once I put 20 minutes on the clock, the repetitive motion of sorting beans really helped me with my sketching. So for each prompt, I would underline words that really resonated with me. And I would use those words to then build a storyboard. So this was really efficient and it helped reduce any creative roadblocks I had. And so after 20 minutes, I sketched out eight storyboards. And eight sounds like a very impressive number, but we still have two more experiments left to go. So we can't definitively say this was the best experiment. So let's go on to experiment number two. So this experiment was particularly interesting because I've never yawned more in a 30 minute block ever in my life. And I was incredibly bored, which was good because that's the emotion I'm trying to evoke, but I was incredibly antsy. I would tap my fingers on the window, then stare at my feet and then go back to staring out the window all in a span of 10 seconds. I can confidently say that this was real boredom. This is the emotion that most people try to avoid, which led me to question if Eva Hoppin wanted this type of boredom for us to recharge because the whole time I wanted to close my eyes and take a nap. Nothing was being recharged besides the fact that I just wanted to sleep. While Eva Hoffman says, allowing ourselves to notice to be open to our surroundings is a way to awakening our curiosity and the world outside ourselves. After 30 minutes, I felt the complete opposite of that. My brain was incredibly worn out. I felt like I just ran a marathon. That didn't really translate well to my sketching either. I felt incredibly sloppy. I felt like my storyboards were scatterbrained and I would go from one prompt to another without really thinking much of it. And ultimately after 20 minutes, I was only able to sketch six storyboards, which doesn't seem that bad compared to the first experiment, but I felt really tired and I felt like the quality of the storyboards weren't up to that standard that I kind of wanted. 
So I picked coffee for this experiment mainly because I have a special connection with it. Every morning when I drink that cup of coffee, the hour that follows is the most productive and the most inspiring parts of my day. The goal is to have my mind wander with the help of caffeine. Almost immediately, I noticed myself daydreaming of ideas and concepts, and all I wanted to do was jump out of my chair and start to work on these ideas. I think the caffeine was kicking in. Then I remembered what Eva Hoppen said in her book. It's worth remembering that leisure is not the same as laziness that it is necessary not only to the life of the mind, but our physical and emotional well-being. Thanks, Eva Hoffman. Just like her book suggested, the real power came when I continued to sit there in isolation and let my mind wander with these ideas. Because what happened was I started attaching meaning to these abstract ideas, which allowed my brain to really zero in on one idea instead of being drunk off of a dozen ideas that would probably not amount to any real life manifestation, which usually happens to me. So how did this translate to my sketches? So after 20 minutes, I was able to produce seven storyboards. And I realized that that's not my highest performer, but I would say out of the three experiments, this was the highest quality of storyboards I'd have sketched. So even though it was probably around the mid range in terms of my performance, the quality was probably the best. So I can't rule this experiment out. Now that I've put myself through three 30 minute boring experiments, what now? What can you and I take away from this? For one, don't ever just sit there for 30 minutes and not do anything. Experiment two was the worst. I hated it, never doing that again. That was the least productive. If you're someone who's open to embracing boredom, what I would suggest is go on a walk or read a book for a period of time or look at art. This is a gradual progression that I think is way more productive and ultimately will lead you to success or whatever you're trying to achieve. Experiment one and three were obviously my favorite. I really enjoyed the methodical practices of sorting beans. That really helped me lift any creative roadblocks I had when I was sketching. Ultimately, the final verdict is experiment three being my favorite. Even though I produced less than experiment one, I found myself incredibly jazzed up with caffeine, which allowed me to just attach meaning to my abstract ideas. And doing that practice really helped the quality of the sketches. So for me, that's what I'm going to do from now on. But I also know that if I have a lot of creative roadblocks on a project, what I might do is an exercise like experiment one, where I'm sorting beans, where that repetitive motion can train my brain to see things in a different way. The word leisure comes from the Latin leachere, to be permitted. And perhaps the first step in learning how to take time off is by giving yourself permission to do so. In a world where everything feels like it's constantly moving, we have the pressure to keep going. It probably explains why the term productivity is searched 1.4 million times every month. Maybe sometimes all we need is 30 minutes to do literally nothing. To allow our brains to just simply wander, to just allow it to recharge the way it's naturally supposed to. Putting myself through these three 30 minute experiments made me realize one thing. I'm crazy. I mean, really, who puts themselves in 30 minute boring situations? Only me. No, in all seriousness, I think our perception on human performance is backwards. And if we can understand that and seek curiosity to find the right answer, you might be surprised what actually makes you perform better as a human. Just a thought.